these are your servants, sons and daughters of your servants, who are victims of man inhumanity to fellow human beings. Most of them were killed, they are innocent. They eat and drink in the morning. Some of them are ready to go for their business. Some of them are preparing to go to school. Oh Allah, we pray unto you to restore their soul, to let their soul rest in perfect peace. Imam Ashafa and Pastor James have come to a mass grave in the town of Yelwa Shendam. They are here to remember and pray for those killed in clashes between Christians and Muslims. We are grateful to God that we have learned this ability to hear one another and create a safe space to dialogue, without which we will always be assuming things from afar, and you can kill somebody based on assumption. We have learned a bitter lesson. In recent decades, Nigeria has been rocked by violence between Christians and Muslims. Tens of thousands of people have been killed in communal clashes. Whole communities have been devastated. One of the flashpoints for conflict was the city of Kaduna. Today, the relationship between the Christian and Muslim communities, which are roughly equal in size, continues to be tense. In the midst of this situation, Imam Muhammad Ashafa and Pastor James Wuye have set up the Christian Muslim Interfaith Mediation Center. So, uh, if you are not really looking for uh, him as a person, but our organization, then we will send somebody. Ashafa and James used to be bitter enemies. used to call me coach, a uh, coach like a football coach, uh, because among my peers, I outdrink them. When we go to drink, I take more than they can. Usually I go to church to see the young girls and try to wink at them, particularly those singing in the choir. After winking at the guests at the choir, I then go out to the community where I take my beer. But that day, I stayed on. And uh, the man was preaching. When he started preaching, I t it was like he was, somebody told him about me. And each time he, he preached and he was trying to point his hand to the congregation, it was he was pointing his hand like unto me. And uh, sometimes I dock under the pew just to say, wow, why is this man talking to me? I had a conviction in my heart that uh, God was speaking to me and that I need to change. And that was my turning point. James became a Pentecostal minister and a passionate evangelist. He served as vice president of the Christian Youth Association of Nigeria. The church has to be forefront of preaching peace because Jesus Christ is the spirit prince of peace. Shall we pray? 
I came from a very strong religious family. A family that are custodian of Islamic heritage. My father is a spiritual leader. And I grew myself to find myself learning about the Quran and teaching it to a younger one than myself. And I was not even able to go to Western education because my family, our family that have a serious struggle with Western colonial authority. They were learned people because they know how to read, how to write in Arabic, how to communicate in this Arabic language. But when the colonial authority come with their own system, they change the language of communications to English. And by changing that to English, that has given the basis for serious withdrawal in anything to do with the West. So most of our families, we don't go to Western education. We have nothing to do with the West, nothing to do with Europe. We have a zeal of protecting, reviving, reformatory spirit about bringing back Islam and the glory of Islam. People expect to see us in that. Such was the family I came from. Allah kafi musanensu. Allah dega gobe zaman da zamu gobe. Allah du wanda ba zai sa kanta Allah kafa tona mashi asiri. Allah kafa ra tona musanensu. Nigeria's Muslims and Christians lived in peace until the last quarter of the 20th century, when economic decline, religious extremism, and political turmoil combined to strain communal relations to breaking point. It was against this background in the late 1980s that James decided to join a Christian militia group. We came from this militia group because we want to protect our people. People were laughing us to scorn. That you, your pastors are being killed and you can do nothing. We say, if the Muslims have spare lives, then we can go borrow it. But if it is one life, we can also put it online. And that was how I became militia. And my hate for the Muslims then had no limits. And no Muslim ever impressed me for whatever reason. In 1992, during the Zangon Kataf religious crisis, that crisis initially was over relocation of a marketplace. Now, for a long time, the economy of the area was dominated by Muslim Hausa. Conflict ensured there, and most of the people killed there were Muslims and Hausas. Now, the cops of those people who were killed there were transported to Kaduna, to a place called Tudungwada. And the Muslims there, seeing the cops of their kings, decided to pounce on the Christians that were there in Tudungwada. And a person, as a trained person, to protect the church, my group swung into action. And there are some of the boys that were with me who were killed during that encounter. And I lost my hand in trying to defend the church. Muhammad Ashafa was in the Muslim militia in Tudun Wada. For 48 hours, we are killing and maiming one another. I was fighting, believing I have to defend my faith, maiming and killing the others. But at the end of the day, my spiritual teacher a man of about 70 years old, he was murdered by the Christian community in this area. Two of my cousins were killed. And I realized, I come to know that it is James' group, the groups of James, who have organized that militia against my group. So I was nursing, the anger is there, and the issue of revenge. I want to take vengeance. 
And for three years, myself and my group are planning to eliminate some of the leaders of these groups. I was in the mocks. And the Imam was talking about the power of forgiveness. And he was talking and saying, yes, it is written in the law that you can revenge an evil equal to the evil done to you. You have right to take a redress. However, the Quran teaches further that it is better to turn the evil with that which is good. So therefore, if you are a Muslim today, you refuse to forgive those who persecute you, those who hurt you, how can you be a true embodiment of Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went further to say, remember Muhammad in Mecca. He was persecuted. He was humiliated. He was sent out. And he went to a city of Taif, a city very close, to preach. But they gathered youths to stone him. They sent the youth to stone Muhammad because they don't want to hear his message. They stoned him. Blood was flowing all over his body. And the angel came. The angel in charge of mountains and hill say, oh, you prophet of God, do I destroy these people? What do you want me to do? God say, give me a verdict. I will do whatever you want to do with them because they've harmed you. You are his messenger. And Muhammad opened his mouth to say, no, I don't want them destroyed. Allahumma gifri ahadi kawmi innahum la yalamun. Oh Allah, forgive my own people. And I wept into tears. I was crying. Tears was flowing from my face. How can I forgive this enemy of mine? This guy who made him kill my spiritual teacher and two of my brothers? Say, Muhammad has forgiven, you have to forgive. And he was looking at my direction, talking, as if he knows what I'm thinking in my heart. I was in an ocean of confusion, or an ocean of war between my conscience, my desire for revenge, and the reality of my standard, which is my test. And suddenly, he finishes someone and says, let's pray. We pray, and after that, I started thinking, can I really forgive James? In May 1995, Ashafa met James unexpectedly at a gathering of community leaders convened at the residence of the governor of Kaduna State. A mutual acquaintance introduced them to one another and challenged them to make peace. Initially, it was full of suspicion. My fear was that, because of my training, he may be planning to identify me and my friends for possible attack when an occasion provides the space for them to do that. If you see his dressing and the way his posture is, you see like an embodiment of an Islamic fundamentalist. We see them as fanatics, as a group that believes Islam only and no other religion. Then my mother took ill then he came with some group of young men to greet her, to see her and visit her in the hospital. And then I started changing. I said, wow, how does a Muslim come to greet me as a Christian? Then at a point, my mother then passed on. Then they came again with a team to greet. And that was what broke me and my resistance to interact with him started falling. I then visited his mocks. Well, it was like I would swallow my heart because I wasn't sure I would come out of the place alive. But gradually I developed confidence and he too kept coming. And the relationship began to um, you know, grow. The reconciliation between Imam Ashafa and Pastor James caused controversy. They were asked to explain their change of heart to religious groups in the area.
but their relationship was still fragile. Sometimes I was tempted to carry a pillow to suffocate him while he's sleeping, when we share rooms. And each time I want to do that, I want to retaliate for my hand. But this force will pull me, thou shalt not kill. For three years, I lost that ambition, that feeling to kill him. But what really removed that from me was when Pastor Ina Amaku of the Family Worship Center in Abuja said, you cannot preach Christ with hate. Christ is love, and the message he's carrying is love. And he said, to you, James, I know you, and I know what you are doing. If you will truly do this work, you must learn to forgive them for every hurt against you or against anyone that you have loved or your loved ones. That broke me, finally. So when I came back, I was anxious to meet Ashafa. It was like a lover looking for his loved one. I was trying to come demonstrate this new insight. So that was my real turning point. That was when I really got into this work. Over the last five years, the work of the Interfaith Mediation Center has been expanding. Teams of pastors and imams journey to trouble spots to lead workshops and seminars. Okay, let's say this is not a realistic one. The rapport between Pastor James and Imam Ashafa is the foundation of their trust-building work with religious and community leaders. I'm not going to have problems with people around me. Is it control your anger, which means anger leads to murder. Yeah. And whoever you kill his brother is going to retaliate, and that leads to genocide, mm -hmm. which we witness in our community today. So the concept of anger. Traveling together as an interfaith team presents its own challenges. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. As a team, you can see the Christian member of the team are waiting in the bus and in the car, and the Muslim community have to go and say their prayer. And when we have to meet on Sunday, the Muslim will wait and the Christian will go to say their prayer and then they come back, we continue. You can see mutual respect for one another, absolute trust, absolute unselfishness in action. The mosque at Samaru Kataf has a special significance for Ashafa and James. It was here that they began their work as mediators between Muslim and Christian communities. During the crisis, this mosque was almost demolished from the tension and attack from the Christian community. We brought the youth here for reconciliation process, both the Christian and the Muslim youth, and we talk reconciliation. Various negotiation of various stakeholders, both from the government, from the other civil society organizations, and our initiatives was able to broker peace within the community. The team often covers long distances, For Ashafa and James, journeying together has become a part of everyday life.
Sumo hole, sumo kinau, sumo hole.